What is going on, everybody? Welcome to this edition of Afterthoughts, recapping UFC DC, headlined by Alistair Overeem and Jairzinho Rosenstrike in a fight that I don't think anyone can say went the way they expected. Um, let's be honest here. I think most people either expected a really, really, really fast knockout from Rosenstrike, or they maybe expected like a mid like a mid to late first, early second round finish for Overeem. That was usually, that was pretty much the consensus that I was uh, catching on with this fight. Um, no one thought it would get into the fifth round for sure. Um, the way it ended obviously was absolutely crazy. I mean, Jairzinho Rosenstroik, you know, I've been saying it for so long with him. He kind of has, you know, I've, I've said he had the touch of God power like in Ganu. That was probably a step too far. But he definitely has that fight ending power at any point in the fight, of course. And, you know, a lot of people always like to describe heavyweights as just generally having that. You know, they're like, well, if you're a heavyweight, you always have that fight ending power at any stage of the fight. And truth be told, that's just not the case. Um, not all heavyweights are created equal like some tend to believe they are in terms of power. Um, and of course, even fewer are on the same level when it comes to striking. There are some that are just worlds above others. And I really, when I look at Rosenstroik, he's really akin to Derek Lewis in that regard, in that he he just always carries that that immediate power. Um, I don't w really compare him to Ngannou. Um, I can't say if Ngannou has that power or not because we've never seen Ngannou be in a situation where he has been able to use his power like that. Now, when he fought Stipe Miocic the first time, you know, he was just grinded out, he was gassed out. Maybe he had that power, but he was on the ground, and he was just, he, he could never execute in that situation. So, can't really make that argument about Nganu. The only two guys you really can would be uh, would be Derek Lewis and Jairzinho Rosenstroik. So, I'm highly impressed with what Rosenstroik was able to do. However, I will say that looking back on this fight, <clears throat> I think I can safely say that I I jumped the gun a little bit with, with Rosenstroik. I was, I mean, from my rhetoric and from what I was basically saying about Jairzinho, um, like, it sounded like I was basically saying he was already ready for title contention. And after watching this fight with Overeem, I definitely, I mean, I have high opinions of him. I, that was... Even if he would have lost this fight, that still probably wouldn't have changed. Um, you know, obviously I have really high opinions of him, but now looking at that fight, I don't think he could beat Francis Ngannou. In fact, I think he would get finished pretty quickly against Francis Ngannou. Um, Overeem landed some really big shots on him. Um, I'm honestly shocked that he was able to stay standing as long as he was. You know, the only time that fight was ever really where he was re ever really trouble was when Overeem took that fight to the ground. Um, now, he obviously needs to work on his ground game, and that's why I really think he's akin to Derek Lewis in that regard, because he, he does not really possess any ground game whatsoever. Um, and now that he's going to be ranked in the top 10, obviously that's something he needs to work on. Um, I think I did jump the gun on him quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> I thought this was going to be a really quick night. I thought he was going to knock out uh, Overeem within the first really within the first minute of the fight, but definitely within the first round. And um, and yeah, but if anything, the fact that he was able to battle back, I haven't looked at the scorecards, but I assume Overeem probably was ahead on him. The fact that he was able to battle back against a veteran like this and finish it so late in such an impressive fashion, um, he definitely gains prestige, um, but I'm not ready to crown him like I was, say, 24 hours ago. Um, still really impressed, but... You know, let's see him work on that ground game. Let's see him maybe work on that strike defense before we start crowning him uh, as being the guy who's going to be a champion one day. Um, Co-main event, Mahina Rodriguez and Cynthia Calvillo. Really interesting fight because it was it was really a tale of, of, of two rounds. You know, that second round for, Rod for Rodriguez was very one-sided. I mean, she, she dominated on the feet. Cynthia looked just completely out of out of the realm of what she can do. Um, 
and Rodriguez just pieced her up. That was just beautiful technique. Her 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 stand up speed, her strike speed is just it's insane. I mean, she's one of the most like she's got some of the fastest hands in that division. I mean, I would put her in that in that league with Joanna in terms of striking speed. Um, and then Cynthia in the third round just used that that relentless grappling attack. Was able to get the fight to the ground. Um, two of the judges scored that round at 10-8. That's what made it end up being a draw. First round was competitive. I scored it for Rodriguez. I can see that third round maybe being a 10-8. Ultimately, Mahina Rodriguez won. Uh, she won two rounds, definitely. It's just a matter of whether or not you think that round was a 10-8. Uh, um, I'm very impressed by both girls. I am impressed by Cynthia in that she was able to battle back from adversity and salvage a draw out of it, especially when it looked like she was she was done. She had no life left after that second round. So the fact she was able to get a draw, I am impressed with that. However, I will say, when looking at these two ladies, Mahina Rodriguez looks so much more complete. Um, like her her speed is just it's so it's it's insane like like when i look at her i see title like real title possibilities i see her being a future title contender maybe even as soon as 2020 um you know now i know strawweight is a shark tank right now you have you know Joanna fighting for the title soon you've got rose in the picture you've got tatiana coming back soon you've still got andrage at the top but when i look at mahina rodriguez i think she really stacks up well against a lot of those girls um i mean her like her stand-up just blew my mind tonight it really did like she was just so next level on the feet um and cynthia i mean we know she's got a great ground game but you know, we've also seen Cynthia comfortable standing up. She did not look comfortable at all against Mahina Rodriguez. She needs to continue to work on that. You know, there was a big story about her, you know, training in Thailand for this fight. She needs to go back to Thailand um, and continue to work on that on her striking. Um, I think her money card comes with her grappling, though. I think she's always, that's going to be what she needs to fall back on in all of her fights. Um, you know, she does need to improve her striking, but her grappling is really what makes her an elite fighter. And that's what's um, going to... If if she has any success going forward, that's what she needs to rely on. And then on. I want to wrap this up. You know, this was a fantastic card up and down. Um, really, we saw a little bit of everything. I mean, we had two draws on the main card. You know, we had knockouts. We had submissions. It was a fantastic card. I mean, this was one of the better fight nights in recent memory. Um, but... I think I'm not alone in saying that the oddest set of circumstances in the night was um, Rothwell and Stefan Struve. That was one of the most bizarre fights I've ever seen. I mean, you had two groin kicks. Both times looked like it, it was going to end on the groin kick. Um, you had Rothwell get a point taken away. It looked like, I mean, it sounded like Dan Mergliata told Stefan Struve, you've got this fight one, just continue. And then if it happens again, you're, you're going to win by DQ. So he continued to fight and then Rothwell TKOs him. I mean, that fight really in a nutshell, that was one of those fights where you, you see kind of like every possibility that could happen in MMA actually happen. And I mean, when you look at Rothwell and Struve, Rothwell threw those body kicks. I think on every other fighter on the roster, those are body kicks, not groin kicks. You know, when you're fighting a seven-foot guy in Stefan Struve, not as easy. But again, it was just a really strange fight. And it's one of those fights that encapsulates every sort of circumstance you can see in MMA. So that was really fascinating to see. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this, this edition of Afterthoughts. Couldn't get that out for whatever reason. I'll see you guys next time, and I'm out.